Hi everyone, it's Cass. Welcome back to my channel, What Cass Read. Today, I'm just gonna do a little bit of a chat and give you a little bit of an update, a little bit of a quarantine update, tell you where I've been, what I've been up to, what I've been doing. I have to say that I have tried to sit down and film. I've tried to film vlogs. I've tried and it hasn't been working for me for whatever reason. I just like wasn't motivated. I wasn't in a good place mentally and quarantine didn't help. Didn't help with it at all. I haven't actually filmed a video since January because February I got sick with the worst flu of my life so then I stopped filming and then COVID happened and quarantine happened and things just kind of went awry. Shit just hit the fan. For many of you who know, some of you don't, but I work for a university and when COVID started shutting down the country, essentially, my job got 10 times harder um, because we had to just switch everything on a dime and start to incorporate distance learning. That's what my university chose to do. And that meant that I started working from home every day. That meant I had to somehow find a way to be productive and present for my students, but still at home, which was a much tougher transition than I anticipated it would be. So that just killed any and all motivation I had for reading because I could literally only focus on the problems that were in front of me and that wasn't reading. For a lot of people, it seemed like quarantine like kicked their reading into high gear and for me that was the exact opposite. So if you are also like me where quarantine didn't give you like the jump start to reading that you were thinking it was going to be, I see you. I understand completely. I did not read anything for the month of March and I didn't read anything for the month of April and it finally took this month to basically the semester ended the semester ended, my workload reduced, and I finally felt like I could breathe, and I finally felt like I could read again. Um, so for those of you who were finishing up school years, finishing up your semesters, congratulations. What a crazy, crazy way to end the semester, to end the school year off for you all. So hats off to you. Congratulations for finishing your school year. And now hopefully you have a decent summer break to look forward to. So, you know, the question became like, okay, what is it gonna take to get me to read again? Because I would look at my bookshelves and nothing, nothing stood out to me. Like I just would look at them, I was like, am I ever gonna wanna read any of these ever again? It was actually, if you have been like a fan of, or if you're on like the Wizarding World website or what used to be Pottermore, now it's the Wizarding World, um, they've been doing the Harry Potter at home read along. And wouldn't you know, it was Daniel Radcliffe reading the very first chapter of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone that just like awoke reading for me again. I was like, what if, okay, I know you've read the Harry Potter books like 5,000 times, but literally what if you just read the Sorcerer's Stone? Like see what would happen. Like what's the worst that could happen? You, you DNF it because you've read it a thousand times. So it's not like you don't know the ending of the story. So I read Sorcerer's Stone, finished it. I was like, okay. Then I picked up Chamber of Secrets finish that too. Um, and then I started looking at my bookshelf again and I was like, okay, what else do I think I could read? Um, I, I gravitated toward young adult first to um, not get myself into anything super dense. Then I finished two more books. And then now I feel like I am back in full swing reading mode, um, actually looking forward to creating TBRs and stuff like that again. So let's talk about just like what I have been reading what's been on my nightstand. Yeah, just give you a quick reading update. I have to talk about this book. This is Fool's Assassin, written by Robin Hobb. This is book number one of the Fits in the Fool trilogy. You've heard me talk about Robin Hobb for a minute, and it's okay. Uh, you know I'm participating in the Elderling Along, so this is actually the very first book of the very last trilogy. If you don't know anything about Robin Hobb, I do have a whole Robin Hobb playlist that I can um, put in the description below. Um, I don't want to get into too much about what this book is about, but I am 60% of the way through this book. There's still a lot left of this book that I have to work through. I started this book in February, and every now and again I'll pick it up, read it, put it down. Where we are in Fitz's life, 
I knew it was going to break my heart. As a matter of fact, this book has broken my heart like three times already and I am only 60% of the way through. So I was like, maybe just like pick something else up because you're going to come back to this one. This is a given. It's going to happen. So this has been like firmly on my nightstand for a while, but um, I'm just waiting for the right time to like pick back up in the story. I will say that like 60% of the way through, got my Starbucks, 60% uh, of the way through, there's a lot of like catching up to where Fitz is now. Um, we had a lot of, I guess, background um, to catch up to where Fitz is now. And now the plot, I feel like, is starting to get into what we're actually going to be doing for the next couple of books. Yeah, so for those of you who have read the trilogy, you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, and it, I have thoroughly enjoyed it. Like, I'm really happy to be back with Fitz. I love one of the new characters, B. I adore her. So I'm excited to see what where the rest of the book goes, but I just haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> Another book that I was working on before quarantine started, this is The Lost Queen, written by Signe Pike. This is book number one of the Lost Queen trilogy. Um, and I think book number two is set to be released at the end of 2020, given that nothing really happens to the release date as so many release dates have been pushed back with COVID. I was reading this book on audiobook. And so the main reason why I've stopped and just set this book aside is because I'm not really listening to audiobooks right now. I get a majority of my audiobook listening in on my commute into work. Well, my commute into work is literally from my bedroom to my kitchen table. So that kind of put a pause on this one. And I would really like to continue this one on audiobook. I really fell in love with the narrator. It's on Scribd. That's where I've been listening to it. This is about a young girl. We've been transitioning a little bit into like young womanhood. Her name is Longorith, and she is a she has a twin brother named Lilacan. This takes place in the Scottish Highlands, and it's surrounding the myth of the young boy who eventually becomes Merlin. Longorith is the twin sister to the boy Lilacan, who will eventually become Merlin. Um, this is a historical fiction book, but it's like for fantasy readers, you could totally get into this because this is back uh, in a time where the folk tales are are the way of life in the Scottish Highlands. So it's not necessarily like these are fairy tales and folk tales. These are just the way that people live their life daily, where they have a respect for fairies. They have a respect for um, tradition. It's very slow, but I like, I like this a lot. Um, the narrator, she has a beautiful accent and all the names of the characters just sound so beautiful coming out of her mouth. Um, so yeah, I very, I very much look forward to continuing with this book, but I, I'm not very far in it. I just, I just realized I'm on chapter eight. So those are the two books that are, are just kind of like hanging out there. Um, then of course, like I mentioned in my big explanation of where I've been, I did finish... Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone and Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. And I am currently reading Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. So that's still been going in the background of the books that I have been working on. And then the YA book that I managed to pick up, I picked up Siege and Storm written by Leigh Bardugo, book number two of the Grisha trilogy. And then I finished it with Ruin and Rising. So I picked up books two and three read each of them in a day. And so that actually felt like really good to accomplish. Number one, finishing a trilogy. Finishing a trilogy that's been on my shelf for ages. Finishing a trilogy that I've been in the middle of for ages. And to like get two books done out of the way. Because let me tell you, my Goodreads count is way behind. I don't plan on changing the number, but it does like make me a little bit panicky that I'm kind of behind on that. This one, I'm pretty pumped about reading this one right now. This is In the Woods written by Tana French. This is book number one of the Dublin Murder Squad series. You can tell from the title of the series that it is a bit of a departure from my fantasy books that I have been reading. Um, this is a detective story. Um, it follows two detectives. Our main character, Detective Ryan, his partner, Detective Maddox, work in Dublin's elite murder squad. 
And the case that they're following is eerily similar to something that happened to Detective Ryan um, when he was a child. So when he was a child, um, he was like a lost boy who had been found, but the two children that he had been hanging out with at the time, they have remained a missing child case. The case that they're working on um, is about a young girl who has been murdered and she was found in the same exact woods that Detective Ryan went missing in all those years ago. It's very slow and very detailed. So if you're someone who likes to read mystery thriller books, but you prefer to have like a huge hook to bring you in, if you prefer a much more fast paced thriller, this currently isn't it. Uh, it. It's a very slow read because it's very detailed. And I actually like that. I prefer that because I don't actually like to read mysteries that have this like immediate hook in the first chapter. Those like airport thrillers, do you know what I'm talking about? I don't generally like those. So I like something to be a little bit more complex, complicated, a little bit more slow. This does like, I mean, we're talking about like day to day of these two working the case, pouring over all the details as they come in. Um, and I really like that. I also, um, when I went on my quest to find more detective stories. I kind of stuck to hopefully like some European detective stories. I don't I don't know what it is about US detective stories that kind of like keeps me out of the story because it's like in my home country. I don't know. Um, so since this place takes place in Dublin, that also kind of fits the bill. Okay, so to conclude this really rambling kind of video, just update video, um, we are currently like midway through May. So I think I'm, I'm just going to keep chipping away at the Harry Potter series, like behind the scenes of all the other things that I'm reading. I'm actually going out of town next weekend. So the closest thing I'm going to get to a TBR this month, but we're talking The Way of Kings, written by Brandon Sanderson, book number one of the Stormlight Archive. Like when I was in the midst of my big reading slump, I kept looking at Way of Kings and being like, you would be the perfect quarantine book. Like, you would really, really be the perfect quarantine book, but I just want to be in the mood for you. And I think now that I've kickstarted reading, I'm still in quarantine working from home. This is going to be my next big book to tackle. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Just giving you new, this quick update. Um, but also just let me know what you've been up to. I have been such a bad booktuber um, these last couple of months because I've barely been popping in and out of comment sections, letting people know what I think about their videos. I've barely been watching any sort of booktube. So uh, just let me know how you've been. I'm trying to catch back up on some of the booktube videos that I have missed. And um, yeah, you can look forward to more videos from me soon now that I feel like I've dusted off the cobwebs and I'm ready to go and film again. Okay, um, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at whatcastred, same as this channel, so it's super easy to find my Goodreads account. That is always listed and linked down below. And then of course, you know how these videos end. I'll talk to you later. Bye.